So I have a task for you today and this will give you some insights on how we are going to go about reducing the dimensionality. I want you guys to draw this painting which you see in front of you and I know that you won't excel at that right but try to do as good as you can okay get your creative hats on in next 30 seconds draw the best version of Mona Lisa as you could on paper trust me I'll tell you how that relates to dimensionality reduction all right so if you are someone like me who is not really artistic you would end up with something like this and if someone has a better picture than me kudos to you but if you drew even worse than this then you should go and get some drawing classes okay but this is as worse as you you could you could go so what are we trying to do over here so if let's say you know someone was more artistic they could have also come up with a better version like this one right and by looking at this picture over here will you guys agree with me that just by looking at this image as well will a person be able to make out if this is Mona Lisa a lot of people will be able to make out that this is a painting of Mona Lisa right so the point that I'm trying to make is over here this is a much more higher dimensional view of this painting over here the image might be no, this could be a 256 cross 256 or even more this is 512 cross 512 pixels or something in that range so how many dimensions do we have 512 times 512 that's a lot of dimensions that's a lot of features each pixel for our machine learning algorithm will be a feature but what we are saying is to represent the same thing to represent the same object you don't need 512 times 512 pixels we could also make up something like this one which definitely needs less number of pixels but still represents the same thing the same underlying object there so that should give you a sense of or insights into the next statement that I'm going to make the statement that I want to make over here is given a training set or an example from your data set there exists a lower dimensional subspace which can still faithfully represent your object does everyone agree to me with that over here we are seeing that Mona Lisa has been represented by 512 cross 512 pixels but even if let's say I gave you a smaller picture of Mona Lisa which was I guess 56 cross 56 will you be able to make out from that image what that is yes you could and even if let's say if the size was not less if I drew an outline like this you could still make out that this was a picture of Mona Lisa so that's my statement given a data set there exists a lower dimensional space from what you already have in most cases you know it if you have, if you already have very few features let's say if you already have like five or six features there might not be an efficient representation in a lower dimensional space but in most cases when you have a lot of features most of the times what you will end up seeing is there is this inherent structure or there is this latent structure to the higher dimensional picture that you are seeing and that structure is what we are interested in today we are interested in seeing is there a structure or is there a pattern that might not be very obvious to our human eyes but which can be extracted statistically can we extract those features from our original data set and a lot of times what you're going to end up seeing is 
For example, in this case, we saw that the shoe size was somehow related to height, right? So by our domain knowledge or by just, you know, from what we know, we know that these two features are related. And adding another dimension over here is just gonna make your performance even worse if there is significant correlation between these two variables or these two features over here. So when you end up having a lot of dimensions, it is obvious that there is some inherent structure. Over here, we saw that there was this structure which we could have extracted from the data which would result in a much lower dimensional representation of our original picture over there. So let's move on from this. Let's see what we are more familiar with rather than dealing with Mona Lisa, let's talk in terms of things that we are more familiar with. Over here, I'm showing you a data set which was given to us where all these points mostly lie in this XY plane over here. There might be some points over here which has a Z component of 0 0.1, but mostly all these points have Z component of zero so they are lying on the surface over here. If I were to tell you to reduce the number of dimensions, intuitively, which two dimensions would you pick? So Rakshita thinks X and Y. Ion thinks that as well. So yeah, you both were right. You would pick X and Y. And the reason you would do that is even if you get rid of this Z axis, you still end up representing your points more or less in the same fashion. The only difference might be that if Z was 0 0.1 over here, now that 0 0.1 becomes zero. So that point might fall on the surface. Imagine that point which was slightly raised now goes back down. So what ends up happening is we were able to reduce our dimensions. Going from three dimensions, we were able to go to two dimensions only now, such that our data points are much more dense in this space over here we were just wasting this entire z space or this plane over here so now we are more dense over here our classification accuracy should increase now our takeaway from this slide should be we want to preserve the planes where we have most variations in our data our variations are along the y axis and the x axis we don't have a lot of variations around Z axis. So we want to preserve these two features or these two directions. But life is not that simple. A lot of times you will end up with a data like this. Now have a look at this data over here. And can you tell me if I want to go from this two dimensions to one dimensions, which axis will you drop X or will you drop Y or something else? So if I were you, I would be afraid of dropping any one of those axes because there is significant amount of information in them, right? There is some variance along our Y direction and there is some variance along X direction as well. So in a lot of cases, we can't just drop a dimension, but is there a way where instead of dropping a dimension, can we find another hidden dimension over here or another vector such that we still preserve a lot of our information but have a compact representation of our data? So what if I told you if I draw a line like this over here, let's say we have a vector z which is right in between over here and if I represent all these points on this Z axis, so what will happen is let's say if I zoom in to this portion, so something like this would happen. All the points will, all the red dots who are, who are in this shape like this, they would fall to this Z axis over here. And instead of representing our data in X and Y axis, now what if I just represent it on the Z axis? Will it be a more accurate representation of my data rather than just dropping out one of the X or Y axes? Does everyone agree to me on that? 
instead of just dropping x or dropping y what if we create a new dimension for us let's say z such that it kind of passes right in middle and when we project all these points on this line or i shouldn't use that fancy word but a lot of times you're going to hear that word projection projection is nothing but let's say if you have this point over here you are projecting this point on this z axis you are assuming what happens if it falls over here so what what's the new point that will get formed so that's the projection of this point on this line and this axis that we are trying to come up with or this vector z is in this case what you see is also the first principal component of this data set and that's why we are uh, the name of our class today was analyzing those principal components given a data set how do you find these vectors which preserve most of your information but still oh yeah we are going from two dimensions to just one dimension z such that most of the information in our data set is still preserved does that make sense so intuitively what we are trying to do is we are trying to find a direction such that these points don't move a lot we want these points to still stay same in this xy plane even if we project those things on the z vector and what if i told you to minimize the movement of points that is the loss of information is equal to finding a line such that when the points are projected they are as separate as as possible so when you project these points this line should be such that when you project these points these brown points need to be as far apart as possible try to imagine that and if you are not able to imagine it let me show you now now do you see when i'm moving this line at this point this projection this black line is a terrible one because these points have to move a lot now this is okay but now these points these red points are getting far away and at this point where it was cutting this pink line over here they were farthest with each other so what we are saying is if we want these blue points and red points to be as close as possible these red points need to be as far apart on this line as possible does everyone agree to me on that read this statement that i'm making over here and this visualization on the left and tell me if that makes sense to you i'm going to wait over here for a few seconds let you guys grasp this information that i'm giving if you want these points to move as little as possible so if you want these this blue point to be as close as this red point as possible that is nothing but is equal to saying that finding a line such that these points are as far apart on the black line these red points need to be as far apart on the black line as much we, as we can we are trying to find a line which will have maximum variance when these points will be projected okay so let's try to formalize it a little so let's say again i have this plane over here now we have already told that there exists a direction such that if we use that direction we want these points to have maximum variance so over here just by looking at the graph we can say that this line over here something which is going from the origin over here so this line or this vector will have will be the line which will have maximum variance so the maximum variation in this data set just by looking at it will be around this line we have a quantity for us called as covariance of a matrix so covariance in this data set is given by you just take each x size and multiply that with the transpose of x i and you average it out so that will give you the covariance 
if the mean is zero and we have the mean as zero over here, all these points we are assuming that they are centered around origin. We know that the covariance of this data set over here is given by each point multiplied by you now you you take all xi's and you multiply by a transpose of xi. That will give you the covariance. And let me also tell you that covariance in this, if you do this math over here for this data set, let's say this covariance is you no know, a matrix that you get. Now I want to show you instead of deriving PCA, I want to show you what happens, an interesting observation that we have. So let's say if I multiply, take any random vector over here. So I took a vector minus one comma one. And what happens if I multiply this with the covariance matrix? I get something like 1.3 minus 0.2. Okay. So if you multiply this covariance matrix with any random vector, so let's say I took minus one comma one, that will give me minus 1.3 minus one two. So this minus 0 0.3, 0 0.2, if you plot it on the graph, it will be somewhere over here. So minus on X axis and minus negative on the Y axis as well. So it will be in this quadrant over here. So let me just put it over there. So we got this new vector. What happens if you multiply it again? What you get is minus 2.74 minus 0.1. So again, we are in the same direction. We are in the same quadrant over here, but our vector, which was initially it was minus 0.13 or minus 1.3. Now it is minus two. So our vector is getting bigger, but it is rotating less. So now we are somewhere over here in the blue. And if you multiply it once more, what you will end up seeing is this vector is getting rotated in a direction of the maximum variance. Eventually, even if you keep on multiplying, as you see, it is we are converging to something over here. Initially, our rotation was quite large, but ultimately what happened is we kept on decreasing the rotation, but our length of vectors keep kept on increasing. So I'm trying to show you an interesting observation about the covariance matrix. And why are we dealing with covariance matrix? Because we are interested in maximizing the variance. And what we are seeing over here is, if you are given a covariance matrix, you multiply that with any random vector. In this case, we are taking minus one comma one. That vector will get rotated by a certain degree and eventually it will stop rotating a lot more. It will converge to a point which has the maximum variance. And in this case, we converge to this orange vector over here. And this problem seems to be familiar to you, right? If you have taken mathematics in your engineering classes, or you no, know, if you have taken advanced courses with mat matrices, has anyone seen something like this before? Yep, Rakshita got it right, Egan vectors, right? So what we are essentially saying is coming up with this is nothing but doing an Egan decomposition of this covariance matrix C. It happens to be that these lambdas are also Egan values of this covariance matrix and the vector V itself are the Egan vectors. Now let me give you some properties about these Egan vectors. The vector V times V transpose is an identity matrix. We don't want any correlations or these vectors, the first vector and the second vector are gonna be orthogonal to each other, okay? So we have already seen that, why do we need that, right? Because over here we said that if the shoe size was dependent on height, we want to get rid of this shoe size. So that's what intuitively PCA is trying to do as well. It is trying to find directions which are orthogonal to each other. So here VI times P transpose is identity matrix and VI times VJ is zero. There is no correlation between uh, the two components of that vector, okay?